bis ich am Fenster bin. It's kind of weird sitting here with you and Stephanie's house. All those times you came into the restaurant, it's like you're a real person now. Almost. Yeah. It's weird. Kind of out of context. Yeah, weird. But great. Yeah, definitely. So, what's your novel about? I mean, it's a personal account of a guy taking care of his father after a stroke. Based on personal experience, but, but only loosely. Well, what's the title? The Day After Yesterday. <laughs> Don't you mean today? Well, I mean, there's more to it. So it's kind of like death and mortality, or...? Yes, but not really. It shifts around a lot. It's about, first of all, the storyline is focused on the father. And then there's a parallel narrative. Wow. <laughs> I think it's amazing you're getting it published. I know how hard it is just to write it even. Thanks. Like me, I have this stupid paper to on Friday, and as usual, I'm freaked out about it. Just like in high school, it never changes. Paper? Yeah, I'm working on a master's in horticulture, chipping away at it. Horticulture? And what, so you want to get into winery someday? Well, I have a copy of the manuscript in the car. Uh, it's not fully proved, but... <laughs> If you're okay with a few typos, <laughs> oh yeah, who cares? I'm the queen of typos. <laughs> wow, this is really starting to open up. <laughs> what do you think? My palette's kind of shot, but and if you ask me, I think I could dub it pretty damn good. Can I ask you a personal question? Sure. Why are you so into Pino? It's like a thing with you. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's a hard grape to grow. It's thin skinned. And it can only be, be grown in certain corners of the world. Not like Cabernet where it can sort of thrive anywhere, even when neglected. Pino needs constant care and attention. And in fact, it's in specific little tucked away corners of the world. Only the most patient nurturers can really grow it and tap into it and get the best out of it. And only then they can truly, truly experience Pino's qualities. It's, it's flavors and it's expressions the most brilliant on the planet. I mean, Cabernets can be powerful, but they seem prosaic to me in comparison. How about you? Why are you so into wine? What about me? Why are you so into wine? I suppose I got into wine through my ex-husband. He had this big show-off cellar. And then I found I had a really sharp palate. And the more I drank, the more I liked about what it made me think about. What did it make me think about? Like, what a fraud he was. <laughs> Yeah, but I do like to think about the life of wine, how it's a living thing. I like to think about what was going on the year the grapes were growing, how the sun was shining that summer, or 
if it rained, what the weather was like. I think about all those people who tended and picked the grapes, and if it's an old wine, how many of them must be dead by now? I love how wine continues to evolve, and how if I'd opened a bottle of wine any other day, it wouldn't taste the same, because wine is living. It's constantly evolving and gaining complexity. That is until it peaks like you're 61. And then it begins a steady decline and it tastes so fucking good. A bathroom over there? Yeah. Come on, you're such a loser. Can you see my legs?